Hello everyone, this is Sam from Language Atlas, and in this video I'd like to show you the Spanish B2 vocabulary Anki deck. In this video, we will go over three things. First, I'd like to show the course structure of the Spanish B2 vocabulary Anki deck. Second, I'd like to show the course content. And I'll do so by having a look at three Anki decks within the overall Spanish B2 vocabulary Anki deck. And third, I'd like to show you some brief editing options. So I'd like to get started with my first point, which is to show the course structure. Now, as you can see, I have two Anki decks over here. I've already opened them. As you can see, I have them right over here. And what is interesting to note that there are two versions, as I mentioned before. We have the European Spanish B2 vocabulary Anki deck and the Latin American Spanish B2 vocabulary Anki deck. Now, I will show you the course structure of both of them. Now, what's important to say here is that in terms of course structure, they're the same. So in terms of chapters, lessons, it's the same. However, audio, pronunciation, IP notations, certain words, certain sentences, that is how they are different. Now, when you get the Spanish B2 vocabulary Anki deck, you have to make a choice which one you get, European one or Latin American one. However, in this video, I will show you both. So let's have a look over here. Within the Latin American Spanish B2 vocabulary Anki deck, there are eight chapters. We have pronouns, conjunctions, verbs, nouns, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, and determiners. Now, if I go to chapter four nouns, you can see that there's a little plus icon in front of it. If I click on it, you can see that there are 19 subdecks inside it. They range from academia and intellect, animals, arts and entertainment, all the way to time, maths and numbers and transportation. Now, what I've done is that I've taken a look at all the words in chapter four nouns and I've categorized them by theme. So if you wish to learn more about clothing and fashion, you can do so. If you wish to learn more about food and drinks, you can do so. If you wish to learn more about nature and environment, you can do so. Whichever theme you're interested in, whichever category you're interested in, you can learn more about that category. Now, I'd like to show you the European Spanish B2 vocabulary Anki deck. I will click on the plus icon, and as you can tell, we have the same eight chapters. Pronouns, conjunctions, verbs, nouns, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, and determiners. And if I click on the little plus icon in front of chapter for nouns, you can see that we have the same subdecks. So that was my first point, which is to show the course structure. Now I'd like to go to the second point, which is to show the course content. And I mentioned before that I have a look at three Anki decks within the overall Spanish B2 vocabulary Anki deck. The three decks that I'll have a look at are chapter four nouns, and then I'll click on home. I will have a look at chapter five adjectives, and I'll go to the Latin American one, and I'll show you chapter three verbs. Now, I would urge you to keep watching, even if you're interested in the other version of Spanish. Again, because that is in terms of course structure, how the cards are set up, they're the same. Uh, but I mentioned before the pronunciation, audio, certain words, certain sentences, they're different. But you will learn a lot. So I urge you, please keep watching if you're interested in the other version of Spanish. So click on Home. I'll click on Study Now. And this is the first card type. We see that we have a Spanish sentence with two, two blanks. So two areas over here, two underscores. We have underneath the Spanish sentence, the English translation of the Spanish sentence. The ladder provided access to the attic. And you can see that the ladder, ladder are both bolded and underlined. That is because we have to know the Spanish version, the sort of Spanish translation of the ladder, and that goes over here. Underneath that, we have the we have a visual representation of the Spanish sentence. And this is here so you can better understand the Spanish sentence, better memorize them as well. Many studies have shown that if you have a picture, a visual representation, you're much better able to understand, learn, and memorize a language that you're learning, in this case, Spanish, so that will be good for you. So let's have a look. What is the ladder in Spanish? La escalera permitía acceder al ático. La escalera, una escalera. Las escaleras, unas escaleras. So right over here, we can see that we have three areas. We have a sentence area, which is the first one. We have a singular area, which is the second one. And we have a plural area, which is the third one. So the third area. Let's have a look over here. This is the correct Spanish sentence with the answer that we were looking for. Now, you may notice that the answer is color-coded. In this case, it is pink. Why is that? Well, that is because the latter is feminine in Spanish. All masculine nouns are blue and all feminine nouns are pink. So whenever you do uh, an exercise within chapter four nouns, you will find that all the nouns are color-coded. And again, the color of those nouns will help you memorize and identify the gender of the noun which is incredibly important because Spanish is a gendered language, masculine and feminine. Underneath the Spanish sentence, we have the IPA notation. And this IPA notation is here so you can better pronounce the Spanish sentence. It will really help you when it comes to pronunciation. 
Underneath that, we have the English translation of the Spanish sentence, and finally, we have the audio. La escalera permitía acceder al ático. Great. Now, the second area is a singular is a singular area. We have the noun in its definite form and the noun in its indefinite form. We have the IPA notation, which is here, so you can better pronounce the Spanish word or the words or sentences. The third area, which is the English area, so we have the English translation of the Spanish noun, and finally, we have audio. La escalera, una escalera. The third area is the plural area. So we have the noun in the plural form, the IP notation, and finally, the English translation. And if you click on this, we can hear the audio. Las escaleras, unas escaleras. Wonderful. So let's have a look at another card. Again, we see the same setup. We see a Spanish sentence. Uh, we see some blanks. We see English sentence. Part is bold, underlined, and a picture. And again, you have to know what goes over here. You have to know what goes inside the blanks. La etiqueta de la maleta sirvió para identificar al propietario. La etiqueta, una etiqueta. Las etiquetas, unas etiquetas. Great. So again, same setup. Sentence area, singular area, plural area. Let's have a look, let's have a look at another sentence. So again, we see a Spanish sentence. Underscore, underscore, so this is a blank area, this is a blank area. Translation, uh, a notebook. What is a notebook? Anotaba las cosas rápidamente en un pequeño cuaderno. El cuaderno, un cuaderno. Los cuadernos, unos cuadernos. And again, we see the same setup. Nothing to be surprised about. However, now we see a noun in blue. Why is the noun in blue? That is because it's a masculine noun. And I mentioned before, Spanish is a gendered language. Masculine nouns are blue. Feminine nouns are pink. Nowadays, there's a computer in almost every household. How do you say household? Hoy en día hay una computadora en casi todos los hogares. El hogar, un hogar. Los hogares, unos hogares. The handle of the pitcher broke. How do you say the handle? Se rompió el asa de la jarra. El asa, un asa. Las asas, unas asas. Great. Let's do one or two more. A candle flickered in the dark. A candle. Una vela parpadeaba en la oscuridad. La vela, una vela. Las velas, unas velas. Great. And let's do this one, the last one. The decoration on the cake was exquisite. The decoration. La decoración de la tarta era exquisita. La decoración, una decoración. Las decoraciones, unas decoraciones. Now, that was the first card type where you saw some blanks and you had to know what goes inside the blank. This is the second card type. Now, we've seen the set sentence before. The ladder provided access to the attic. Now, whereas before you had to know what went inside the blank area, now you have to spell the word. So you have to type the word. And this uh, second card type, that's where you can actually spell the words correctly. Let's have a look. La escalera permitía acceder al ático. La escalera, una escalera. Las escaleras, unas escaleras. So, over here you can see that I, that I spelled the word correctly. And because it's in green, it is correct. However, what if I do not know the correct answer? What if I do something like this? La etiqueta de la maleta sirvió para identificar al propietario. La etiqueta, una etiqueta. Las etiquetas, unas etiquetas. Now you can see over here a few things. The parts that were correct are shown in green. The parts that are incorrect are shown in red. And what I was missing is shown in gray. So this is how Anki helps you. This is how Anki corrects you. So even if you make a mistake, Anki will help you. Now, that is what I want to show you from nouns. Now I'd like to go to chapter five, adjectives. I'd like to show you some adjectives. Click on study now. So we see over here the same thing that we've seen before. We see a Spanish sentence with a blank part, an underscore. We see the English translation. Pregnancy has made me very emotional. And emotional is bold and underlined, so you have to know emotional in Spanish. And we see a visual representation. El embarazo me ha vuelto muy sensible. 
Emocional sensible. Emocionales sensibles. Great. So we can see over here that we have the sentence area. Over here we have a singular area and over here we have a plural area. And there are two words to say emotional in Spanish. Uh, we have emocional and we have sensible, uh, which you see right over here, right over here. And again, in plural form as well. So let's do another one. The recipe calls for precise measurements. How do you say precise? La receta requería medidas precisas. Preciso, precisa. Precisos, precisas. And this is where things get interesting. So over here, you have the sentence area. I think this is nothing new. You've seen this before. But when we go to the singular and plural area, this is where we see a slight change. We see that the adjective over here is in the masculine singular form. And over here, we see it in feminine singular form. We see the adjective over here in the masculine plural form. And we see it over here in the feminine plural form. So again, because Spanish is a gendered language, most adjectives ha um, have their own masculine and feminine version as well. And of course, they have their own singular and plural versions as well. So we have four different options for most adjectives in the Spanish language. However, that is okay because this Anki deck shows you all those different options. It shows you all the different singular and plural versions, shows you all the different masculine and feminine versions. So whatever you're dealing with, you are fine. You will be prepared for it. They had a heated domestic dispute. Domestic. Tuvieron una acalorada disputa doméstica. Doméstico, doméstica. Domésticos, domésticas. Wonderful. Now we see the same thing over here as well. Uh, singular is a singular area, and then we have the masculine and the feminine version. And this is the plural area. We have the masculine and the feminine version as well. Regular exercise is beneficial for your health. Beneficial. El ejercicio regular es beneficioso para la salud. Beneficioso, beneficiosa. Beneficiosos, beneficiosas. That's one more. Despite their great ideological differences, they were able to hold a civil conversation. How do you say civil? A pesar de sus grandes diferencias ideológicas, fueron capaces de mantener una conversación civilizada. Civilizado. Civilizada. Civilizados, civilizadas. And again, I think you get the idea. Let's go to the second card type as well. I really want to show you that. So if you were to continue long enough, you would get to the typing exercises. However, we have already seen that. So I will uh, skip that part for now. Now, those were the chapters and decks that I want to show you from the European Spanish B2. Now I'd like to go to the Latin American Spanish B2. So I'll click on the plus icon and then I'll click on chapter three verbs and I'll click on study now. So let's have a look. What do we see over here? We see the same setup. We have a Spanish sentence with a blank area. We have the English translation of the Spanish sentence and a certain part bold and underlined to incorporate. Party leaders voted to incorporate new legislation into the act. And of course, a picture. Now, what is to incorporate in Spanish? Los líderes del partido votaron para incorporar la nueva legislación al acta. Incorporar. Now you may have already noticed the difference. The voice that you're hearing is different. Now why is that? Well, before we were dealing with European Spanish, now we're dealing with Latin American Spanish. So the way that things are pronounced, uh, certain words and sentences, they're different. And of course, this is reflected in the IPA notation as well. So already there's a difference. And of course, there are many other differences as well, but this is what you may notice at first hand. So we have a sentence area and just the verb area. There's no difference. There is no, no such thing as singular and plural verbs. A verb is just a verb. We see the Spanish sentence. We see the IPA notation. And again, mind you, this is now the Latin American IPA notation, English translation, and the audio. Over here, we have the verb area. And you may have noticed something interesting, that the verb is in the full verb form, sometimes called the infinitive. Why is this? All the verbs that are in chapter three verbs, so all the verbs that you'll be learning, are in this full verb form, sometimes called the infinitive. This is because once you know a verb in the full form, it is easier to conjugate it when it comes to certain subject pronouns, and it's easier to conjugate it depending on different tenses. So once you know the infinitive, it's very easy to play with it and adapt it to different circumstances. The law has been amended to permit dual nationality, to permit. 
se ha modificado la ley para permitir la doble nacionalidad. Permitir. And again, you may notice the full verb as well, to permit. Art galleries often display masterpieces from different eras. Display. Las galerías de arte suelen exponer obras maestras de distintas épocas. Mostrar, exponer. And in this case, you can say to display in two different ways in Spanish. He can be sentenced to life in prison. Sentenced. Se le puede sentenciar a cadena perpetua. Sentenciar. He went to sleep planning to arise and write a paper during the night. Se fue a dormir planeando levantarse y escribir durante la noche. Levantarse. It is absolutely pointless to exclude the European Parliament from that discussion. To exclude. Resulta absolutamente absurdo excluir al Parlamento Europeo de ese debate. Excluir. Great. Um, now, I could continue like this and I would end up with the typing exercises. However, we've already seen it before, so I won't go over that one again. So that was my, that was my second point. Now I'd like to go to the third point, which is to show the brief editing options. Now, many people ask me, how can I change the amount of cards that I do per day? It was very simple. You go to the deck and you click on this icon next to it. You click on options. Then you can change the new cards per day and the maximum reviews per day over here. So currently I will see 20 new cards per day. I can change this to 15. And currently I see 20 reviews per day and I can change this to 15. And a review is just something that you've done before that you will do again. So a review. If you click on save, you can see that the total amounts have increased. And I can decrease this again by changing 50 to 20 and changing 50 to 20 over here as well. And I'll click on save. Now that is that. My recommendation for you would be to start with a low number. I think 20 is very fair. And then work your way up. Language learning is all about creating a habit and sticking to it. And this is a lot easier when you start with a low number. But then, of course, later, if you've created and established a habit, you can, of course, pivot to a higher number as well. Now, that was it for this video. I'd like to thank you again so much for watching. You can get the deck at languageatlas.com. Now, mind you, you have to pick which version of Spanish you wish to learn. It can be European Spanish, it can be Latin American Spanish, whichever one you prefer. Please uh, have a look at what's relevant in your case. Are you more interested in Europe or more interested in Latin America? Then make a choice depending on that. Now, I will share all the links in the description and comment section. Once again, you can get the deck at languageatlas.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you the best of luck when it comes to learning the Spanish language. Goodbye.